hot in here. Right? He's sweltering. You could say it's toasty. Welcome to this week's episode of Talk Culture and another edition of Game Finder where we are covering Mortal Kombat 11 and the Aftermath DLC that has just recently dropped for you. Yeah, so today we're going to be focusing on a little bit of the story of the game, some new features, uh, some of the things we like, and just for your notice, there's going to be spoilers in this, so please tread lightly. I mean, it's going to be spoiled. Very, very spoiled. And I'll make sure to, before we get to like aftermath, um, towards the end of the video, to say, hey, just don't listen, don't watch if you don't want that kind of ruined for you. That's like because... a level two spoiler. Like you got the level one right here, but you get that level two. I'm the final boss. Yeah, that's his final form. I feel like I could evolve. Anyways, so let's just go over a couple things before we get fully into the story and talking about Mortal Kombat 11. So what's new with Mortal Kombat 11? What gets you going Ooh. on Mortal Kombat 11? So, first thing right off the bat that gets me going, Mortal Kombat 11 is a direct follow-up from MKX, Mortal Kombat 10, for those of you that don't know Roman numerals. And I loved MKX. It's one of the best-selling Mortal Kombat titles so far, unless MK11 passed up, which I doubt it did yet. It definitely can, and we're going to get into why. Boom. But I love the Mortal Kombat 10 uh, video game. It was fantastic. Always fantastic. Always right, fantastic. Right, in the, right in the beginning. Yeah, right in the beginning. I set everyone up. Um, it really changed the way Mortal Kombat is played. Uh, before, you just kind of like, you started out just fighting. That was all Mortal Kombat had was fighting. And then over the years, they added to the cinematics more and more to the point now where it is actually a interactive movie. Like yeah. it's, and I will say, if you don't like cinematics, Mortal Kombat might not be the best for you because there is a lot of cinematics. But it throws you in and it makes you feel immersed in the game. Mortal Kombat 10 was great. I think it was a good turn for uh, for them to kind of evolve with the consoles. You know, for a little while there, Mortal Kombat was like just feeling like your typical fighter simulator game but it's really changed over the years to now where mortal kombat 11 came out and made it that much better well so i'm gonna jump in so like this is totally not another mortal kombat like that's kind of what you're saying um like what we agree on is like this is not just another mortal kombat like everybody hates ea sports like yeah you might buy madden and nhl and all that you know those games but they just Repackage it. Oh, hey, here's NHL 20, Madden 20, whatever. Yeah. Like, just because this is MK11 or Mortal Kombat 11, like, this is not just another one. This is just balls to the wall. They didn't leave nothing on the table. Um, I mean, we talked smooth as shit, right? It is. Completely smooth. A um, lot of cool new things or kind of reworking some, I'd say, older mechanics, mm -hmm. but just making them completely um, new feeling. Yeah. That makes sense. Mortal Kombat, we're going to... Let's refer to it as MKX for the rest of the video. I think everyone knows what we're talking about. So MKX for MK10, MK11, the new one. We're talking yeah. about. Boom. So MKX, like, it added all these new features. You know, the X-ray uh, finishers. Um, like, the di like more in-depth blocking. It just oh, yeah. kind of added a lot more to what you already had and then some. MK11 polished those things. It took what was new from MKX and made it that much better. So now your, for instance, your X-ray moves are now crushing blow moves, and they're just that more, that much more badass. I mean, they're they're almost like a mini fatality in a way, without finishing the match. Yeah, you you basically want to block your opponent's attack and instantly like come back, like say with an uppercut. Like that's a typical Mortal Kombat move, uppercut. And at that point, like, depending on if you have, like, a sword, spear, whatever, like, you might end up going up through their head, or you just, like, crack in their jaw with Johnny Cage. Yeah. You know? So, they have definitely expanded upon that, uh, made it look a lot more polished. 
And then basically instead of like the full x-rays, you have like that cinematic like attack and scene um, that is now fatal blows. So they've taken out definitely like breaking bones, like yeah. you were saying. And I think that's probably one of the better things of the fighting. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that they have, I'm trying to think what it's called offhand, and I phew, sh- shouldn't have brought it up until I was ready for the dang That's word. okay. Well, you think about it. I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to touch on something else. So with those crushing blows, you also have the environmental crushing blows. So like if there's like a stalagmite or stalactite, whichever one's on the ground, I know there's a difference between the ceiling and the floor. If there's like a sharp stalagmite sticking out of the ground, grab their head and smash it right into that. Destroys them. I think that's awesome. You know, over the years, they've done more and more environmental things. Um, One thing I'd love to see them while we're talking about environmental, I'd love them to do the thing like the Injustice games did where you could actually change the whole scene of the fight with the environment. Like, I think that'd be so awesome. You know, Mortal Kombat scenery is freaking amazing i caught myself i almost said fantastic it's top it's Can't top notch more. yeah just one um, fantastic just saying. they just it looks great like some of them are really beautiful like you have the um oh what is it the fire palace that was fire called? the fire palace. palace bone palace bone palace no i'm talking about um scorpions uh garden i can't think of what it's called it's called the fire garden fire garden i mean you Thank only said you. it basically literally got there it looks beautiful, and then you go down to, like you said, the Bone Palace. Bone Palace? It's the Bone Palace. It's the Bone Palace. Where it looks dark and eerie and gross, um, you have the Fight Club yep. that Johnny Cage fights in uh, against, oh, oh, Cabal. Yeah, he fights Cabal. Yeah. It's just awesome. Like, great scenery, and I think if you added that change in scenery, it'd be really cool. Really cool. So, I I completely still have not remembered the word, but essentially, when you are using a special move, maybe you'll get it for me, using a special move, and you're, like, extending it, making it more, like, brutal, getting more hits in, someone get me the freaking word. Oh, man, like a a combo? Not a combo. They've made it easier. In MKX, it was more difficult. You got a whole... 13 different buns, push this one this way, and six, 14 different ways. Whatever. They made it easy. Just hit oh. one button. I still don't know. Whatever. They've made it a lot easier for you to look like you're, you know, able to be in a tournament. You know, like, I'm not great at it. You're not great at it. Speak but it's just... Yourself. I am the Mortal Kombat champion. Okay, whatever. Anyways, I'm just moving along now, because I can't find the word... Um, one of the really cool things about MK11 they brought into this and it was something that was expanded upon from MKX is the Towers of Time. It, it's my, it, I don't know, it probably is my favorite thing really. Um, mm. So every tower, it's timed. What a surprise. Whoa! Towers of Time. <laughs> what a surprise. It makes sense. But these towers all change. The fighters that you have to go against and the rewards. Mm. That's the best thing because there are so many skins um, they have things like augments to make your player do different things or less resistant, more powerful, whatever. Um, I don't know. I, I'm a sucker for like like the skins um, and what would it be like? Character different, things? Like different uh, like entries, different finishers, yeah. fatalities. You unlock brutalities. Different scenes, cinematic scenes. Yeah, um, yeah I agree. Uh, Towers of Time is awesome because one of the things that always kind of pushed me away from Mortal Kombat and like the other fighting games like Soul Calibur, Killer Instinct, stuff like that, is once you like played so many fights, you kind of just got bored. You're just like, not too. I've done not, Yeah, there's not really, especially in Mortal Kombat now having this story. Once you get to the end of that story, there has to be something to keep you coming back, and that's the Towers of Time, baby. That's what it is. It takes up all your free time. Towers of Time, baby. Yeah, I mean, you can go into a tower. Say, um, I started one for Sub Zero a couple of days ago took me about 20 minutes wasn't a real big tower and i got some cool um what is it ice ice you need shuriken yeah. things i mean there's Those axes things. yeah it's the it's the shuriken looking things. ice shards we'll just go yeah. shards what are you doing um or you can go into a real in-depth one that might take you an hour or two that's yeah. real difficult and you might, un- I mean, throughout you unlock stuff, but you kind of have like a goal, like 
a set kind of that you unlock if you complete the towers all the way through. Right. And let's not forget, there's modifiers that make it different. You know, sometimes you'll have like an assistant, like maybe someone is coming to help you when you call them in. So like maybe I'm sub zero. I want to call in Scorpion for a quick second. Yeah. You do that. There's a ton of different modifiers. It makes every match feel different. And that kind of spices up the extra stuff you can do once you beat the story. Yeah. I don't want to focus solely on the Towers of Time, but something that spices it up that's a little bit better uh, from MKX is the Crypt. Oh. Ho, ho. The Crypt. Ho. Crypt Keeper. It's like you knew I was I was getting to I it eventually, it. but something. It, still like gets, it still gets him. So the Crypt in MKX was... Um, but first person, you kind of it was very blocky. Like, Not like you, you were playing like Doom on like Windows ninety eight. It, it was it was it was terrible. Like I like the concept, I like the idea, but they've made it a third person view. So you're just some random guy going around um, Shang Tsung's island and unlocking uh, chests, crypts, all that stuff. You know what I mean? Um, but you have to collect the different collectibles just to basically go to different areas. Mm-hmm. And I, I think. Just that interaction is what everyone's looking for. Like, like I said, I, I like the the different skins, the different uh, customization pieces for mm-hmm. the game with the characters. Without the crypt, like you're not getting it, you know. And yeah. I think that's really fun to see what you unlock. The crypt, and not to mention the crypt is huge. Like I don't know how far you're in, but I'm like down in Goro's chamber. I, I'm like, like in his probably way room. past it at this I'm point. I'm sure. Like this map is huge, and it literally has chests and like he said different uh, like things that you could unlock for characters by spending coins you get these coins from uh winning matches and towers and uh, you get them online yeah you get some online online, but mainly you get them from towers and it really just again is another mode to kind of spice things up skin spicy did you end up getting to the point where you use the soul fragments no i don't think okay so you get ermax amulet no okay that far anyways so there's more than just the coins. You have to collect soul fragments, which is like a little green icon with a skull. And then there's also hearts that you um, um, earn by doing fatalities, brutalities, uh, and stuff like that. Yeah, in no, the game. I don't think I got any of those. We'll talk a little bit more after this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the crypt is something that, I don't know, I thought on the last one wasn't that great. Like you go into it, spend mm-hmm. a little bit of time. This one, like I just like wandering around. You're just going yeah. around the island. Um, so I think that's really fun. True. So let's go into basically a little bit of the DLC and then we're going to get to the point of the story, which, which I think is probably the biggest thing that's going to bring anybody to buy this game, to play it, um, and really jump into the franchise, I think. I agree. Tell them about these combat packs. Let's tell you about them combat He's going to tell you about the combat packs. packs. It's almost like a tongue twister. Yeah. So the combat packs, um, if you're new to this, is characters um different things that you know different people to play with as well so we have spawn we have shang sung which i mentioned the island he was um in the first pack you have terminator oh goodness you have night wolf we got the joker the joker robocop sindel 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 katana's mother it's her mama shao khan's wife he, I mean, I mean, baby Anthony, mama, not necessarily. Anth- I mean, anyways, it's Sindel. Is there anybody else that we're forgetting on that? I feel like there is, but I can't think of who it is. Anyways, so they give you a lot of different characters. I know who it is. Who is it? Fujin. All right, Fujin. All right. Raiden's brother, the god of wind. All right. Sorry. So I was testing him, I'm, I'm a, and he passed. I'm a dial it back. I'm sorry. Dial it back. You're freaking people out. Sorry, I didn't mean to. It's Fujin! Anyway, sorry. The combat packs, it's something that they are known for at this point. Different characters. Now, they are going to be adding more. I've watched a lot of different interviews with Ed Boon, um, one half the creator of Mortal Kombat, and that kind of whole lore. So, there are going to be some more. So, definitely stay tuned on that. But the other DLC, and we're going to get to it, we mentioned before, Aftermath. It's a continuation of the story. So... Let's set the table, all right? Set it. Not this table. So, Mortal Kombat 11 starts right after MKX. Okay? So, Raiden defeats Shinnok. All right? If you don't know who Shinnok is, 
Look them up. Just look them up. Read a book. Okay? Um, sometimes there's worse fates than death, and basically that's what Rain... Or actually, that is what Rain says to Shinnok. Exact Cuts his words. head off. Exact words. Cuts his head off. Um, basically keeps him alive with just his head, which I don't know how that works, but they make it work in Mortal Kombat world. Power. And Shaolin he, magic. He possesses um, Shinnok's amulet, which possesses a lot of evil energy, um, some bad juju that... You will see, without giving a lot of it away... Um, Basically, that, power is the revenants. Yeah, but it messes with Raiden. Because um, he's does. always been like the, the clear-headed, like, I know exactly what's right, what's wrong. And it, it definitely messes with that. You mm -hmm. know, and that's, that's a big piece. Poisons the well, you could say. Poisons the well. Thank you. And that's a big piece of the story in MK11 is a lot of the events... And I don't think this gives a lot of it away, but a lot of the events in MK11 are because of Raiden. Mm -hmm. Right, and his poor judgment, his poor lack of decision thinking for himself because of the power of the amulet that's kind of corrupting him. Yeah. So, where do you want to go with this? Like, you you want to? Well, so from there, you basically play as different characters of the M, the Mortal Kombat universe. Just MK. Kind of going okay. through chapters. I don't remember exactly how many chapters there are, but occasionally you have the option to pick. So like. At uh, one point, Jax, you know, uh, returning veteran in the Mortal Kombat world, is roaming with his daughter, Jack Jackie? It's Jackie. Jackie. Yeah. And you can actually pick it if you want to use Jax or if you want to use Jackie. And it really kind of changes up everything because depending on what you pick depends on the story that you're going to kind of get. Now, they do end up in the same ending and you have you have two endings that you can get. But it's the way you get there just kind of changes it up. So you always have these options also to go back and play as the other person once you beat the game. Yeah, to fully 100% it. Um, I, I think one of the coolest ones, um, to piggyback, <laughs> um, Scorpion and Sub-Zero. Mm -hmm. Like, like those are like the probably two most known they characters. They are the faces of Mortal Kombat. And literally, you get to pick between those two like they're helping each other. So yeah. I think that's really cool, um, just to finally see them on the same page. That's one of the aspect. biggest things too. Is like, for ever since Mortal Kombat came out, you know, you had the other like kind of variants of Scorpion, you had like Reptile and um, uh, like Smoke, stuff mm -hmm. like that. But it's always been Sub Zero and Scorpion going against each other. And spoiler, they're allies in this game, which is everything up. It turns the world upside down. But the way it works out and how it makes sense just shows it's a testament to how far Mortal Kombat has come over the years, especially in story building. Yeah, now going a little bit deeper into the story. So the main antagonist, um, her name is Chronica, okay? And she basically, was it, would you say, bends the sands of time or manipulates them, yes, right? Um, a lot, it. everything in this story involves time and manipulation and things like that so if you like stuff like that you're gonna be drawn in pretty darn easy mm -hmm. um trying to make sure i don't say anything bad like that gives it away just skim let's just skim just skim skim the surface okay so a lot of older characters that have say died off in the past um or maybe weren't even together like they're coming together because obviously you have to defeat this enemy she's yeah. the most powerful that we've ever seen more powerful uh, more powerful than Shao Kahn um, Goro even Shinnok himself yeah, you know? basically now everybody has a common enemy regardless of if they're from the outer world or wherever yeah. they have a common enemy so yeah. it's interesting to see some of the characters over the years that might have hated each other kind of working together realizing if they don't it could be the end of their time as they know it yeah and what chronica is trying to do is essentially create a new era and that's what she has coined it um a new era she you. says it's something like that very similar but i i think i don't i don't want to go any further than that because there is a nice twist at the end that i think you're gonna really enjoy i know we enjoyed it when we were watching oh, yeah. and playing um but i do you want to just kind of give the spoiler warning now because we're gonna get into aftermath is there anything else you want to add spoiler warning because we're about to get into aftermath 
There you go. I think we gave you enough enough seconds there. So, mm-hmm. aftermath. It takes place right after the defeat of Chronica. Okay. So Liu Kang, the Fire God, at this point, who embodies Raiden, mm-hmm. um, defeats Chronica. Now he's trying to take everything back, restore it to where it was. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, have probably a better timeline, better things going on. Yeah. Um, Just that's... in case you didn't catch us, we did say that right. Liu Kang and Raiden are now one. I probably should have emphasized that. You should have. Like, I feel like that was like the big thing. Like, they're God. Well, they're a combined God. They're two gods in one. What a great deal. It's two for one. Technically. Yeah. But anyways, so immediately after that, Liu Kang's sitting there trying to, you know, manipulate the sands of time, fix the timelines and everything like that. And then who appears right through his little portal? Spider-Man. We never seen it coming, folks. That's not it. Shang Tsung. (laughs) My goodness. Sorry. The sorcerer. Um, the most probably diabolical character in Mortal Kombat history. Dastardly. Dastardly. I think Quan Chi's up there too. But um, he comes through with Fujin and Nightwolf. Yep. Um, I know if I keep going, I'm going to say something bad. Let's say similar. But I, That's similar. Shallow. That's shallow. what I was looking okay. for. Sorry. Um, but from there, you see that everyone's trying to come together. Raiden, Liu Kang, Shang Tsung, Nightwolf, and Fujin to restore everything where they have to go back and take Kronika's helmet or crown I should say um, and that's the only way really you can manipulate the time appropriately right yeah now with that being said without going too much more into detail a lot of things go on around the way that kind of just throw everything off I mean we all know Shang Tsung is dastardly just said da- so we gotta be careful yeah. to trust him but at the same time this kind of throws an issue where is what happens if you don't trust him i mean shang sung has been an enemy that hasn't been able to be trusted for a long time across many games Everybody so really it it's all on trust and what he's gonna pull off or what he's gonna pull out of his sleeve and he got some pretty big sleeves so with that being said that's a basic highlight on the dlc of aftermath can I, can I tell him about the end? Oh, you can't say the end? You know I really want to talk about it, alright? You really want to talk about it. So, I don't know what else to say. Is there anything I could say? I want to talk about it more. I want to talk about it more. I'll tell you what, though. I know where you can talk about it more. Where? In the comments. That's pretty damn good. Why don't you take it away? Alright, so... As always, to piggyback Ooh. off of what he says, Ooh. talk about this game in the comments. We want you to go play it. Obviously, in Game Finder, the ultimate goal is to have you play something that's awesome, near and dear to us. But always make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell to make sure you're notified of other videos, other Game Finders, other awesome stuff that we are dropping for you every Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. What time is that? 6 p.m. Eastern. Word? Yeah, 6 p.m. Oh, Eastern. 6 PM every Eastern. Friday. And you can't change the day. Yeah. It's, Friday. it's Friday. At 6 p.m. <laughs> Eastern. It's like one of those weird like car commercials. 6 p.m. Eastern, like, you know, on Friday. Yes. Yeah. Just, how about you just tell right, them who we are? What? Tell them who we I'll are. Tell you who are. Thanks for stopping by. Talk, Talk culture. culture.